Hello and welcome to another how to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS, and today we have got an absolutely blinder of video. Well, that's what we think anyway. Before you go any further, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Come on guys, you know it makes sense. We need those subscriptions to make sure we keep making the content that you guys love. And I'm chasing that YouTube plaque. Didn't hear me say that. What are we looking at today, guys? Well, it's a super exciting, super exciting. I'm so excited I can't even speak properly. It's a super exciting technology from one of our brand new partners, Eski. Now, you may have seen some of our advertising around Eski, but we think we found a really cool product that will suit a lot of you guys that are in the access control market. So if you are in the access control market, listen up and pay close attention. Eski, very simple product. That's the instructions. And then this is the product. Comes in a lovely brown presentation envelope. As you can see here, it is an access control card. Similar to any access control card. So if I take my standard MyFair 1K Prox, which effectively this is extremely similar to. Standard S key. Exactly the same. But they're not. This technology allows you to add biometric level security directly to any access control system without the upgrade of the hardware infrastructure. Yep, you heard me right. This little card here, you can see the fingerprint scanner here, or the fingerprint reader takes your fingerprint and stores it on this card as a biometric fingerprint so this does one of two things one it eliminates the need to upgrade your software your hardware infrastructure your cabling so if you have an existing maybe older access control system where you want to add biometric level security to your access control system this is a really simple way to do it now if you're doing it from a new system perspective of course there's lots of other choices and we have, you know, product that will suit that. Not everybody has the budget, the time, the resource to go and upgrade their whole system architecture. Now that can be really resource intensive. If you've got multiple sites, multiple reader technologies, multiple VMSs that control those multiple sites, etc. Maybe it's built into the architecture so you can't simply upgrade the reader technology because it's you know built into the fabric of the building and maybe listed, you don't want to disrupt that. This, and there's a lot of legacy systems out there, guys, similar to CCTV. The UK is full of legacy systems that want this level of security without that, I guess, burden of upgrading the hardware, the cost, the resource, like we've already discussed. Super simple, take this card, you enroll it. So first thing is, follow these steps. So you activate the card and you assign the person, puts their fingerprint in there, and that securely stores the fingerprint in this card. It's as simple as that. It's not stored anywhere, it's stored directly on the card. Groundbreaking technology of how this takes the fingerprint, stores it on this card. You all know how a prox reader works. When this card is in the vicinity of a prox reader, it energizes it, which then wakes it up, charges it, it's got a coil in there, it's got a circuit and a microchip processor in there, which then allows you to put your fingerprint in there. So should this card then match the enrolled card that you, when well, you enroll this, it matches the profile of that user, and the fingerprint matches, it would allow you through the door. Now this is a really cool concept, because if I take this card, here, my existing card. Now, if I drop this on the floor, anyone can come and pick this up. And especially because I got DVS on there, they know that this is probably a card for DVS. They can turn up, badge through any of the door I got access through until they find one and get access at any time that this card is granted. That's super scary, guys. For those of you that don't wanna use the face recognition access control, it's very, very powerful, but some people don't wanna use that for lots of different reasons, for different contractors, uh, you know, maybe security concerns, even though there shouldn't be any, you know, privacy, etc., and cost. This is a really suitable alternative. Now, if I drop this card on the floor, I walk along and I simply pick it up. Now, of course, I can go and try it on every reader. That's not gonna let me in because I need to put my fingerprint on that card at the same time as being present on the prox reader and both the card details and my finger combined 
will then look for authentication and should it be authenticated on that door at that time period, it will let me in. So it adds the two-factor authentication, which is so key in today's society. Another thing it stops you doing is, I'm walking through a turnstile or a door and I can pass that back to my friend and they can use the card to get in. Time and attendance, same thing. You know, I could say, you are Bob, sorry Bob, whoever Bob is, and give that card to them and they can badge me in and out and pretend that I'm actually in work or out of work. You know, it's very insecure as a format when you just use a single card on its own. You know, the great thing with biometric is it is locked to me personally. It can't be cloned. You know, unfortunately there is cloned devices on the market. So I can simply take a MyFair 1K Prox card, very cheaply clone that card. Multiple times, lots of people can have access with that card. With this, I can't, I can't clone it. The fingerprint cannot be cloned. Really, really secure. Um, and there are obviously several other benefits associated with that, but you know, again, time and attendance use, anti-pass back, if you've got that enforced, then you know, obviously, that may give some level of prevention, but you know, cloning it, uh, dropping it and finding it, you know, having to use the fingerprint and the card at the same time really locks that in against me as a profile. And it's it very difficult to argue then that it wasn't me that used this card. Now, currently, these cards are a one-time use. Once I've locked my profile into this, you know, I can't then delete it and reassign it to a new person yet. That is coming later this year, so stay tuned for that cool update. So the first thing I really want to show you is in this video is how to simply enroll this card. So we're going to reposition this camera, we're going to put it next to a prox reader, we're going to simply follow these instructions and we're going to activate the card and lock my card fingerprint or my profile against this card. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to enroll it against uh, a new user in Hike Central. We're going to make a user up using this card to show you how that works. So stay tuned while you reposition the camera. I'll be right back. Okay, so what we've done is a simple, simple, created a record here on Hike Central. All I've done is uh, an S key one, uploaded the credential there. You can see if I click on that, it shows you the card number but I can go credential management, there's a card. I can actually add a new card, so if I take a blank card and then assigned it, it would come up with the card number there. A very, very simple way to do this. Click save, and I'm gonna now upload that to the ACU. Once I've uploaded it to the ACU, we'll do some testing. So I'm gonna stop the camera. It doesn't, you don't need to see me upload this to the ACU uh, file. But give me two seconds, I'll upload it and then we'll reposition the camera to show it working with the fingerprint. Okay, and welcome back. So we've programmed the card. Hike Central's uploaded, like we said. We've moved to a more graphically representative device, actually, because when I scan the card, you'll see it's the ESCII record that I've set up. So we've got the ESCII card here. I've got my fingerprint locked in, as you already saw. Like I said, it takes four or five times to lock your fingerprint in. Can't be reassigned, but we are working on that. This is a typical Hikvision face rack unit effectively, but we want to add the biometric level security. If I take this card and present it on its own, it does nothing, no access, as you can see there, nothing. If I put the card on it and then present my finger, it should then grant me access based on my access level and scheduled times, etc. Place the card on there, put my finger on there. Welcome to DBS, please stay safe. So you can see there, that did authenticate. Again, I've got the worst fingers for fingerprint technology in the world. As you can see, I rip all the skin off, I bite it off, and if some of you are similar to that, then you do need to be uh, quite firm with the finger press, is what I found. So again, put the card on there, and then firmly press the finger. Welcome to DBS, please stay safe. And you can see there, it allowed me to gain access. So a real firm fingerprint press on there. If I present the wrong, finger it goes red as you saw on there and doesn't allow me access if we move across to the hike central software here and present it to you in this manner i'm gonna sort of move you forward a bit here guys and bear with you can see here so we've got the credential here and then on the access control software you can see 
latest record if I pop it out and you can see on the access control record there you can see that's the ASCII card on that unit with my face so nice and simple so really simple using the S card key there I've added the biometric level security as we've discussed all along so next steps for you guys Get involved, look at your customer base, see what technologies you can simply upgrade by just giving a user a card. No hardware, less stress, no resource required to do that. It is quite simple to do as I demonstrated. If you want a free sample, contact your DBS sales rep first off, or you can contact Eski and they will give you a free sample to test to make sure it works with the technology on site. That is really important and one thing I definitely really want to promote make sure the card works with the technologies in place before you buy loads of cards it's really important you do that once one card works then obviously it would work on the rest of the infrastructure so you'd be safe to proceed what you don't want to do is buy hundreds of cards potentially and then these cards not work so definitely definitely get the free test card and make sure it works on your site I'm eliminating all your pain points here guys because trust me I'm one of those people who would buy 10,000 of these and then find out they didn't work and then be quite embarrassed by it that's just the type of person I am don't make the same mistake as Dave does anyway I hope you enjoyed the video if you want to know any more about Eski please contact your DBS sales rep or Eski directly and we'll be more than happy to help and support you other than that thanks for watching make sure you subscribe we'll see you next week for another how-to video 